Lift your right hand and shout, I am strong. I am strong. So we are doing a series all through this month titled Strong. Living the life that knows no defeat and suffers no loss. I believe that you will not be defeated. I believe that you will not suffer loss. It doesn't matter what the devil does. Last week we dealt with the transactions of the covenant. And today we are looking at the oppression of the spirit of might. Somebody shout might. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. He said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Lift your right hand and say, Father, Father. strengthen me. Amen. With might, with might, by your spirit, by your spirit, shout amen like thunder. Amen. You see, life is hard for everybody, but only the weak settles for a hard life. Life is hard for everybody, but only the weak settles for a hard life. It doesn't matter how challenging life is. A man of might will break through. And I speak over you in the name of the Lord. You will break through. Amen. Amen. Nothing becomes mighty without might. No, 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 no. For you to be mighty, there must be might. And this nation demands men of might. This city demands men of might. And you're one of them. Amen. I can't hear your amen. 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 In First Kings chapter two, verse one and two, David was talking to his son Solomon. In verse two, he says, "I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man." Now he's talking to a young boy. His son. This boy is not mature enough to take charge. But the father said to him, Well, you may not be old enough to be on the throne. But you are the one for the throne. So be strong. And show yourself, not a tata. Show yourself a man. People of Gateway, as you look at the challenges in the nations today, it's time to tell yourself, I will be strong and show myself a man. Are you with me? Yes, I woke up this morning to a text message from somebody that is uh, a preacher. And uh, he said, you know, pastor, you know, I, I, I've been crying and crying and crying and the person was just writing all the lamentations of all that. And I said to myself, no. No matter what you see, Satan must not see you cry. I don't, am I talking to somebody here today? He must not see you sweat. I lift my hand over you. All through this year, only tears of joy. Amen. I can't hear your amen. 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 There is no way life can defeat you. I think I'm in the wrong place. There's no way. The pressure is there. It says, show yourself a man. Be strong. I see you do that. Amen. amen. I can't hear your amen. 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 And I'm sure you know that defeat in life is first an attitude. Huh? A man can be down but not out. No, you didn't hear me. Things may be down right now, but deep inside you know, I'm going somewhere. You don't lose hope. You don't surrender to noisy negatives. You know I am going there. I told you many years ago, it's Winston Churchill that said, 
that courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. You went from one failure to another, but you never lost your enthusiasm. That's courage. You are pushing ahead. You are making a demand on life to deliver what he promised. I lift my hand over you. Before this year is over, your story will be a testimony. Amen. Since it's not you, I dash your own to somebody. Amen. So why are we talking about the spirit of might? Why do we need to operate in this? You see, it takes might to guarantee successful destiny journeys. It takes might. A few days ago when we were building this place, the ground here was so mushy. And then we're trying to get uh, uh, these big tippers to come and tip sand here. And sometimes I'm here watching them. While you are here, you notice the tippers with bad engine. No, you're not hearing me. As they come in here and they put their something, go, 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 go. At a point, you have to get the bulldozer to help push them. The ones with good engine, they come. The ground is challenging, but they're still moving. Come on, are you hearing me? I come from a village that our riverside many years ago was very slopey. And then many times you see some of these big tankers that come in. And the water, the, the place is sloping and snaking. And uh, the ones with bad engine, many times, that's where their journey ends. They drive up. And then the engine stops. And you see the car rolling back until it enters the river. We saw it many, many times. Because life is challenging. It takes might to have a successful destiny journey. That's why in Joshua, in Judges chapter 6 verse 14, God said to Gideon, go in this thy might. You don't go without might. Only the mover will become movers of things. Come on, are you hearing me here? Have you ever seen a bulldozer before? Or one of these uh, things that pull that up? Before they can pull that up, they plant their feet well on the ground. Men of might are the people things don't shake. I see you get there. Amen. Why do we need might? The world is full of strange forces. And without might, a person quickly becomes a prey. This world is full of strange forces. Without might, you quickly become afraid. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. And on the side of their oppressed, the kind of teeth and claw that lions have, until one of them turned back at the risk of his own life, is like going toward the lions. Brothers and sisters, I was watching this buffalo come close to the lion that was biting on his horn and bend the neck with head with his horn and lift the horn. Lion jumped and ran. All the other lions ran away. When the other buffalo saw that this one was fighting, they came too. I watched as they dispersed the lions. The lions couldn't eat that thing. And I said to myself, this is why it needs to, you need to hang around with a strong person. You can't, am I talking to somebody here? You can't hang around with a weakling. I never marry a sissy husband. Not, you, know, you know, all of these young girls are moving around now. And somebody, you are seeing a young man and he looks nice. He looks very gentle. He looks his, please find out if he's a sissy. Not the high, high kind of husband that there's a challenge in the house. He's crying. You are crying. You are even the, you are even the one comforting him. He said, he said, my husband, don't cry now. It will be well. It will be well. It's only job you lost. You didn't lose your life. Come on. Come on. You are not a man. You should wear skirt and come out. Can you lift your hand above your head? I declare over you, 
This year you will walk in strength. Amen. This year you will walk in power. Amen. This year you will walk in boldness. Amen. Look at when they attacked the camp of David in First Samuel chapter 30. The Bible says, and David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons of his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. His God. Somebody said, I encourage myself. First service, I don't know what they did to you. But whatever they did to you, I rebuke it now. Hey. Lift your right hand and say, I encourage myself. I encourage myself. Can you lift your right hand and shout, I encourage myself. I encourage myself. Brothers and sisters, in this life, many people will not encourage you. In fact, most people around you will discourage you. But are you hearing me here? They will do all manner of things to bring your heart down and bring your hand down. No matter what you are going through, if there is nobody to clap for you, clap for yourself. If there is nobody to cheer for you, cheer for yourself. If there is nobody to tell you it is well, tell yourself it is well. If nobody tells you you are doing well, tell yourself I am doing well. If nobody tells you you can make it, tell yourself I will make it. Jump on your feet and shout I will make it. I will make it. Encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Are you hearing me? That is what gives men strength. When I look at the, four, the three Hebrew children and they stood their ground and they said, Listen, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you. The God we serve is able to deliver us. You know why they're able to do that? One of them said, Let's stand. The other stood. The other stood. The moment you are in a company of Two, three, four, five persons. And one starts talking negative. All your boldness will go down. What I'm saying is that true? Can we do this? No. Uh, you see, they give you ten reasons why you cannot be done. They talk this, talk this, tell you stories of people who tried it and they failed. And then suddenly fear comes. Am I talking to somebody here today? Fear comes. Why won't you go ahead? They tell you, no, it can't work. You know, we had impact uh, on Tuesday. And uh, one of the words that God gave me, I said, there's somebody here. Last year on your birthday, you were supposed to wed, and you canceled the wedding. This year, again, on your birthday, you canceled the wedding. Because you said there's no money. A pastor came out. They are printed card. As the day was approaching, he said he can't raise the money. And they canceled the wedding. Can you imagine? And I said, uh-uh, what's the big deal? For me, I print card. What is needed in any wedding is you and your spouse and the pastor. There is no law that food must be served. There is no law. Thank you, I love you too. There is no law. There is no law. To serve you food, me cancel my wedding for lack of you. The grace, lift up your hand from today. The Lord give you a strong heart. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. amen. Now, you don't have to be mighty to operate in the spirit of mind, you don't have to be a big man to operate in the spirit of mind. No, you don't have to build muscles to operate in the spirit of mind. Are you with me? Gideon was hiding in the wine press. He wasn't a mighty man when God called him a mighty man. If he was mighty, he wouldn't be hiding to thresh his wheat. He would have done it in the public. But he was hiding. And God said, you're a mighty man of valor. If you have me, say yes. yes. What of Elijah? You know, many times when you hear the story of great men, we like to have heroes. So we take them and put them at a high. That's why Nigerians worship pastors. We take men of God and put at such a high pedestal. And we forget that there are men first before men of God. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at Elijah. Jezebel threatened him. And Elijah ran. That tells you that Elijah can fear. Ah. Huh? So if you are somebody here and there is still fear in you, you can still carry the power of Elijah. Am I talking to somebody here today? So you don't have to be mighty. Are you still here? Look at Peter who denied Jesus. 
and yet he's a chief apostle. So it doesn't have to be that you are so strong. No. Even if you have fear, do it afraid. Are you hearing me? Keep moving. Keep acting as if nothing will happen. Your future will open up. God will take you there. I'm talking to somebody who has gone home. Are you in this building? Lift your hand and say, I am a man of might. I am a man of might. I am a man of might. Weakness does not work in my life. Can I hear your amen? amen. Hebrews 11, 32. And what shall I more say? For the time we fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, David, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Look at verse, the next verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions. Next one, quickly, quickly, quickly. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, and then you see command, and you look what next. Out of weakness, we are made strong. All these guys you are reading about, all these guys you are celebrating, all these guys you are hoping to be like, you are actually like them even now. They were just made strong out of weakness. They were not strong men. They just entered into the strength of God. I stretch my hand toward you. Today, you'll be strengthened with might by the spirit in your inner man. Amen. I can't hear your amen. 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 So these guys were not mighty men. They, only, they were normal people like me and you that operated in the spirit of might. Are you here? Oh, are you here? Yes, sir. They were not mighty men. They were normal people like you and me that operated in the spirit of might. They just stood and dared it. And the power of God availed for them. As you live here now, you will buy that property. Amen. As you live here now, you will build that thing. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. As you live here now, you will get that visa. Amen. As you live here now, you will build that company. Amen. Is anybody hearing my voice? Whatever you dare to achieve, I command you achieve it in the name of God. Don't let the devil trick you into thinking that you are, you, you are not enough. You are enough. I say you are enough. Amen. I told you about the brother. He's now in one of our uh, satellite churches. Came to me. Brought uh, his uh, building plan of a three-bedroom house that was not even well put together. I looked at the building plan and I looked at him. I said, I won't approve this. He wanted me to pray for it to go and build. I said, I can't approve this. I said, this is not looking decent. I took my pen I put here, I put here, I put here, I put here. I said, tell the person who drew this, that I said, you should put pillars and take it up. He looked at me with his wife. He said, Papa, and how do we do it? I said, are you the one to build or God is the one building? Because you have to decide whether, because you came for me to pray for you because you don't even have enough money to do this one. Since you don't have enough money to do this one, why don't you trust for something bigger? Since it's the same person paying. No, you are, you are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? You see, there are people that dare things. I told somebody a few days ago, I'm going to pay for your uh, child school fees. And the person said, okay. And all that. You know what they did? They went and got a body in school. And sent me a bill. This... Friday. As I said, I'm going to pay school fees. He went and got the boarding school. He said, the person, he said my, I want my daughter to stay in the body house. <laughs> no, you're not here. As far, as far as they're concerned, they have insurance. I promise them. Lift up your hand. <laughs> no, no. You see, you, see, you, see, you see, that's the kind of mentality God likes. No, you are not hearing me. That's a kind. When God promises something, take it higher. 
I speak over you today. You will do that thing. Amen. You will achieve that Amen. thing. You will go higher. Amen. When your aim is take your portion. Can I tell you about the young man I was talking to you about? Huh? By the time they were finishing the upstairs, the house has been dedicated now. By the time they were finishing it, they bought two plus beside their cows. God kept supplying. God kept building. God kept taking them higher. The reason you are down is that you are not daring. So how do you operate in the spirit of might? Number one, operate from the spirit dimension. Number two, channel the grace of a mighty man. Number three, take steps at the prompting of God. These are the three points I'm looking at in the three services. To operate in the spirit of might, you must operate from the spirit dimension. That's in the first service. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Very quickly. Are you guys okay? Yes, sir. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou steer up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Can, you, can, can everybody here? Come on. Can you look, look at me? Bring out your hand. Look at your hand. I said, there's something, there's something in my hand. In my hand. Now touch your chest. I said, there's something. There's something in my spirit. In my spirit. Touch your head. I said, there's oil. Yes, oil on my head. On my head. You see, it, Paul was writing to Timothy. Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, I am telling you, my son, stir up the gift of God that is in you by the putting on of my hands. I, see, when I put hand on you, Timothy, something entered. The reason you are not enjoying what enters is that you didn't stir it up. Come on, are you with me? I mean, it's easy to understand that if you have ever drank tea before. You have water. Are you with me? You take a cube of sugar and you throw inside it. You take your uh, overtain and you put there. You take your uh, needle and you throw in there and you forgot to use your spoon and stir it you will drink it, it will be colored water there will be no good test, what I'm saying is that true yes. you are not going to see the full benefit of what is inside because you didn't stir it Paul was saying to Timothy so much is loaded in you, stir it there are many people that come here since you've joined gateway oil upon oil upon oil upon oil impartation upon impartation stir it up are you hearing me yes. stir up the gift that is in you operate in the spirit dimension stop looking at yourself from the physical start looking at yourself from listen you are bigger on the inside than on the outside no, you didn't hear me well. Yes, Are you hearing me? Yes, can, you, can you shout with me? I am bigger. I am bigger. On the inside. On the Scream inside. it again. I am bigger. I am bigger. On the inside. On the Say inside. like one of us. I am bigger. I am bigger. On, the on the inside. Shout amen like thunder. Amen. So operate in the spirit dimension. How do you operate in the spirit dimension? Live higher than your physical circumstances. Live higher than your physical circumstances. Brothers and sisters, there is something called the bondage of circumstances. Somebody say bondage. Bondage. Let me hear it louder. Bondage. Bondage. Can I hear it louder? Bondage. Bondage. The bondage of circumstances is when you keep looking at how things are until how things are incapacitate you. You analyze and analyze until you paralyze. It's a bondage of circumstance. Anything you want to do, you first think about how much money is in your pocket. You think about how many connections you have. You think about what opposition is against you. Every time you are analyzing, 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 analyzing. If you are going to live in the spirit dimension, take your case higher than your circumstance. Begin to move as if what God promised you is real. Second Corinthians 4 verse 16. For which cause we faint not now. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Next verse. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What you are going through now is a light affliction. 
Are you hearing me? The financial challenge, the marital challenge, the health challenge is a light affliction. But it works out a more far more exceeding weight of glory. But don't look at that light affliction. Look at the next verse. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So you are looking at the pain in your body. You are looking at the empty pause. You are looking at the dryness in your business. You are looking at the crisis in your marriage. You are looking at the issues challenging you. Paul says, stop! Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What are the things you can't see? You, the, the promises of God. The covenants of God. The spirit of God. The angels of God. The blessings of God. You can't see them, but they are real. Can you lift your hand and say they are real? They are real. First service is falling my hand so bad. Can you lift your hand and shout they are real? They are real. So don't look at the things. He said for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. What you are seeing now will pass. The visible is subject to change. This brokenness will end. Amen. This shame will end. Amen. This lack will end. Amen. This harassment of landlord will end. Amen. This pressure of life will end. Amen. Lift your hand and say it is ended. So, I pray from the spirit dimension. What do you do, pastor? Celebrate your revelation into reality. That's how to operate in the spirit dimension. Celebrate your revelation into reality. You are here right now. What did God say to you concerning your destiny? You are not yet seeing it. It doesn't matter. Celebrate. Is anybody hearing me? Uh, is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. You see, you see, you see, you see. An architectural drawing is not a house. Huh? But it's a journey to a house. Is that true? Ah, huh? yes, what God showed you will come to pass. Amen. Celebrate it, celebrate it, celebrate it. And hang around people that celebrate your glory. Hang around people that celebrate your vision. The moment God told Joseph he was going to be royalty, the father made him a coat of many colors. Wore him traditional title dress. So the only way Joseph is going, Joseph is reminding himself, I'm going to rule. No, you're not hearing me. Joseph was wearing a Mayana cloth. Why? Because in Papa know that this boy, there is glory on him. Brothers and sisters, you don't dress for where you are, you dress for where you are going. Am I talking to somebody here today? Live at the level of where you're going to celebrate your revelation into reality. If God told you that he has answered your prayer, behave like somebody God has answered. If you're here, say yes. yes. I shared with you some time ago in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 15 when Solomon woke up from a dream where God said to him, ask me anything. The Bible says Solomon woke up and it was a dream. And Solomon gathered his family members, gathered his friends and did a party to celebrate a dream. If it is you, you saw yourself in the dream and Jehovah sent an angel and handed you three big Ghana must go bags full of dollars. When you wake up, you go and treat malaria. You will tell yourself something is wrong. He says, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sick again. He said, they should get, go and get me. What, what malaria drug do they find now? He said, go and get me one. I need, I, need, I need a single dose of this. Why? The kind of dream I saw yesterday night where they were carrying bag of money and giving, not Solomon. The moment Solomon saw God giving him bag of money, Solomon woke up in the morning, took the little cash he had, did the party for everybody, and told them I'm a millionaire. Where is the money? He said, God promised. Lift up your right hand. As you celebrate your revelation, may God confirm it. Amen. I said, may God confirm it. Amen. No, no, no. I said, may God confirm it. Amen. No, you are not saying anywhere. I said, may God confirm it. Amen. The third thing to do is speak and take steps at the level of your oracle. Speak and take steps at the level of your oracle. Brothers and sisters, when a person is operating from the spirit dimension you don't speak like at your level you speak at the god level you speak at the level of your oracle if you have my voice say yes, yes. 
First Peter 4 verse 11. He said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You speak at a higher level. Listen to me. There's a place you speak for. People think it's arrogance. If you help me, say yes. I always tell people, you say, look at me. Many times people hang around me. And they hear me say, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this and all of that. You know what they think? They think that somebody is sponsoring us. They think we have some money kept somewhere. They think we have this and all of that. Some people think that maybe I have some friends in Abuja and Lagos and they were giving me money or some other pastor friends to do what we're doing. No, 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 no. I say it and I leave it for God. And we start the journey. And we take one step, we take another, we take another, and we dare God to fail us. But we keep talking big and talking big and talking big and talking big until we become big. No, you didn't hear me. Yes, sir. Lift up your hand. May God give you a big mouth. Amen. Amen. As you live here now, talk greatness. Amen. Talk power. Amen. Talk well. Amen. Talk lifting. Amen. Can I hear your Amen. Amen. And then take steps. Somebody say, I will take steps. I will take, steps. take steps at the level of your oracle. Take steps at the height of your, of your revelation. Of the God you serve. Jesus said to Peter in Matthew chapter 14. He said, come. Walk on the water. And Peter got up. He was taking steps. Not at the Peter level. But at the level of his oracle. Anytime God tells you something, move. Go and register company, register. Go and get the visa passport, get it. Start the building, but I have only 50,000. There's the foundation, let God finish it. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. Are they still in this building? Yes, sir. I will teach you this, you hear me, but if you don't do it, you won't get far. You keep prophesying. You keep prophesying. Ezekiel said in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 uh, to 8. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Keep speaking. Nobody will kill you for talking. Just talk him. If you have my voice, say yes. 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 I told you some time ago. I said, if I told you now that I will never die. There's one man somewhere in uh, some place... Uh, uh, your cross river to go to that said he will never die that he is a holy ghost I don't know if anybody remember are you still here? yes sir eh? on a well? Yes, is there not a place your cross river to go to? Yes, uh, so that place will cross river to go uh, the man sat there some years ago he said no go die now the problem we say you, are, you no go die is because it's simply that Okay, if you die, what thing we go do you? Nothing. If you say you no go die, and then you die, will somebody wake you up and say, oh God, you don't die, you don't die. <laughs> Is anybody hearing me? Nobody will wake you up and say, oh God, you don't die. You say you no go die, you die. Now the people where remain go suffer. Every argument, now them go, they argue, you don't go where you don't go. But at least all the years you live, you live like an immortal. Am I talking to somebody here today? And I think I should be living like an immortal. Huh? Lift your hand above your head. May you go now and live like an immortal. Amen. Then allow the lion in you to roar against your position. That's how to live at the spirit dimension. When no position comes, when darkness comes, when fear comes, allow the lion in you to roar. Don't allow Satan to eat your lunch. Are you with me? Yes, sir. The Bible said about Samson in Judges chapter 14. As he was going to Timnath, a young lion appeared and roared against him. And the lion inside Samson roared back. Brothers and sisters, I told you a story some time ago. I don't, you see, that story made a lot of difference in my life as a kid. I used to have a young boy when we were in school. Believe me, from class three, he was bullying me. And I'm not a fighter. You're not hearing me. I don't like quarrel. I'm a man of peace. <laughs> Anything that disturbs me, I just let you go. You want the coat or your tech. 
So he bullied me a lot. And he was a very, he wasn't that big, but very strong. They used to call him Tiger. How about these one or two persons that went to school with me in this building? They know the person I'm talking about. His father was a policeman. So he has even extra security. No, you're not hearing me. You can't, how, what, why are you going to report him? And Tiger bullied me in class three and class four. And then one time in class, in our primary five, I will never forget that day. He did all of that. I don't know what entered into me. And I pushed him back. I have never pushed him before. Every time he bullies me, I just leave him. He conked me, I walk away. He pushed me, I walk away. That day he pushed me, I pushed him back. And the moment I push him back, everybody in class knows George cannot fight. And you know how students behave. The moment I pushed him, they cleared the way. They wanted to see me dealt with. They cleared the way. He came, he pushed me. I pushed him again. I don't know what entered me. He came against me. I don't know how I bent down and grabbed his leg. Brother, before he could think, put him on the ground with his head. And there's a way your head will hit ground. You paralyze. The moment, just grab the leg. He hit his leg on that, on that floor. You could see the dent on the floor. <laughs> it was heavy. Tiger laid down there paralyzed. He couldn't get up. The whole class was helping me. And I was thinking of how to run away. <laughs> In my mind, if this boy wakes up, I may not wake up again. <laughs> but do you know something? The way he landed, shame caught him. As he got up, the way he walked away, the class was helping me. He, he slipped out of class. From that day till we left school, he never toyed with me again. He suddenly thought I was powerful. I come today to tell you, as you leave here now, that tiger will go down. Amen. That in fighting you will go down. Amen. If I hear you, amen, you take your portion. Amen. But you see, spiritual might is built up by intentional fortification. Somebody say intentional. Spiritual might is built up by intentional fortification. You need to fortify yourself intentionally. How do you fortify yourself? In Acts chapter 2032, Paul said to the church, he said, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. What gives you spiritual might is the word of God. The word of God builds you up. If you are somebody who doesn't spend time in the word of God, you will never be spiritually mighty. The second thing that gives you spiritual might is praying in tongues. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Praying in tongues gives you spiritual might. Can they put Jude 1 20? Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But ye beloved, Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying we are in the Holy Ghost. So to build yourself, you pray in the Holy Ghost. How do you build might? I say number one, charge yourself with the word of God. Number two, charge yourself by praying in the Holy Ghost. The third thing, charge yourself with continual joy. Don't let another human being steal your joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't hang around people that steal your joy. Stand on your feet. Did the word get to you? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Lift your two hands higher than your head. I release you today on the authority of Jesus. Lift your hand above your head. Why does it take you 10 minutes to get up? Lift it high. I'm talking to mighty people and they're sitting down there. Wave your hand and wave it and wave it and wave it and wave it and wave it. And give the Lord a shout. Lift your hand and say, Father, I declare I am a man of might. I will not lose in the battle 
house of destiny. Father, I declare I am a man of might. I will not lose in the battles of destiny. Oh, pray here about and make the declaration. I am a man of might. I don't lose. I don't go down. I don't see shame. I don't suffer loss. Get up. In Talaga. In Kepiritu. In Makata. In Prekatosh. In Kagaba. In Makayake. In Baranta. In Kekekeke. In Shoko Barato. In Baranata. In Kekekeke. In Prekatosh. In Prekatosh. Jesus. Today. Shout Amen. Lift your two hands and say every weakness in my life 